Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Colton and in today's video, I want to give you a word of caution and tell you why my newest Digicam is currently sitting in the refrigerator. So you heard that right. My Konica Minolta Maxim 5D that I just picked up, haven't really shot a single picture with, is now sitting in my refrigerator with my fingers crossed that somehow it just sitting in there will fix it. So I'll spare you a really long story and just say that I recently picked up the Konica Minolta Maxim 5D because I shoot Sony cameras and this is sort of a grandfather camera to what Sony's cameras have become. And so I thought it would be cool, you know, I'm into digicams, I shoot Sony, it'd be cool to shoot like sort of this grandfather type camera to modern day Sony cameras and just get a feel for the camera itself and some of the features that it had that weren't necessarily standard at the time. So I was very excited to try out this camera. It was um, in working condition, um, but unfortunately after just a couple of clicks, it died. And I never actually got to take it out of my apartment. I was just testing it, getting the settings right here in the apartment. Um, but now, rather than record an image, it basically records a black image with some blue or orange type of lines that go through it. Um, if I let it sit for a long time, sometimes it'll start to take what looks kind of like it might be a photo, but it's not really taking the full photo. Um, and so it really looks like something happened with the sensor. Either the sensor itself is dying um, or maybe some sort of connection to the motherboard is corroded, something like that. Um, a little bit of research into it and it turns out these uh, kind of era cameras from Konica Minolta all suffered from a similar sensor problem that kind of plagued the system. So not just the Maxim 5D, but also the 7D and several other cameras also had this sort of issue. I guess it's kind of like Nike where certain decades of Nike shoes like the soles will just crumble away. Um, I guess that's maybe a, a similar analogy, but uh, unfortunately that's like one of the worst things to go wrong on a camera because it's extremely expensive to repair if you can even get the parts to do it. And um, so unfortunately it is not worth repairing. It would be cheaper significantly to just go buy another one off of eBay. But the problem is that since this is not just an isolated problem that just happened to this one camera and is rather more of like a widespread issue for a bunch of cameras. Um, it's very possible that I could go buy one off of eBay and that it could just have the exact same problem. So I think for me, I probably will now steer clear of the Maxim line of cameras and maybe just Konica Minolta cameras from that period in general. And I guess that's where sort of the word of caution comes into play. Um, and this isn't specific to just digicams. If you're interested in film cameras or any kind of old equipment, especially if it has electronics in it, it's worth noting that sometimes they break. And if they had problems that were widespread when they were new, those problems are only gonna be worse 15 or 20 years down the line. So if you're interested in a particular camera, my recommendation beyond just making sure that it works and it has all the parts when you buy it, is to maybe do a little bit of research ahead of time and just sort of find out if the camera had any sort of widespread issues or anything that might be worth knowing about that might influence your decision. Because there are definitely some digicams and film cameras that are tanks, built well, didn't have a lot of problems and still hold up today. And then there are cameras that are the opposite, that did have problems that are even worse today. Um, one funny note about this is that this was widespread enough that Konica Minolta actually offered free repairs if you had this problem. Obviously, they're no longer in the camera business, but some third parties had kind of taken up the repairs for Konica Minolta cameras. So it's possible it could have been repaired through them. The downside is they stopped offering repairs due to part shortage in, I want to say, like November of 2020. So only a few months ago, I maybe could have still gotten this repaired and now they no longer offer repairs. So now I basically can't, at least as I mentioned before, not for a reasonable cost. 
So just a funny tidbit about timing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, that's how it goes when you buy old used gear. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So just do a little bit of research ahead of time and see if there are any problems people experience that you see like referred to a bunch of times where it's like, oh, a lot of people had this problem. Then that might be an indication that it was like something that affected a large number of physical units. Uh, but like I said, don't let that scare you off. Just use it as a word of caution as you look for whatever camera you're interested in picking up. Um, with that being said, if you have any sad horror stories like this uh, that you would like to share, please let me know in the comments below. I'm sure other people watching this video would appreciate that because then they'll know maybe what cameras to be cautious of. Um, but I appreciate you all watching this video. If you like this video, uh, hit the like button and if you want to see I guess hopefully not more content like this where I'm talking about broken cameras But if you want to see more content in general hit the subscribe button for now I'm Colton and I'll see you in the next one